Hello, I'm going to present the paper incorporating behavioral theory in design ideation for changing sustainability behaviors. The first author of this paper is Aisha Alwasan. She is in maternity leave. Uh, I am Mauricio Mejia. Other two co-authors are Yuman Xie and Daniel Fisher. We are from the Transformation Lab in uh, the Design School of Arizona State University. Theory uh, has been subject of discussion in, in, in design. We have to acknowledge that uh, in design education and practice, there is a more exploratory approach with uh, not much theory in, in, in the design process. So theory has been absent in design education mostly. Many scholars have said before that there is a lack of guiding theory in, in design in the field. So we need more theory. Uh, there is a growing recognition on, of, of uh, using theory in, in design processes. Another argument for this is the idea that problems are increasing in complexity. So we need uh, theory to help uh, designers in, in the process. In behavior change, in particular, uh, there are, seems to be even uh, a more uh, growing recognition that behavioral theory should be used in design. Uh, many uh, scholars have valued uh, the idea of theory in design. For example, uh, Fieldman uh, said that theory enriches creativity. And, and others have said that uh, theory can enhance learning uh, in, in design education. So what theory should designers use? There is a tendency to borrow uh, theories from many, many fields, from psychology, sociology, anthropology, philosophy. In research, for example, there are uh, different theories like cognitive dissonance theory, social learning theory, behavioral economics theory. Uh, there are many theorists that have framed uh, studies and, and have used to, to see how they can drive the design process. In practice, this is less clear, it's less studied uh, what theories designers use. Uh, and there has been also, uh, in, in particular in design for behavior change, uh, uh, a proposal, uh, different proposals of methodologies and tools uh, like persu persuasive technology or design with intent. Uh, these models and, and approaches usually uh, compile, integrate, or apply different theories to, to develop and propose uh, approaches, tools, and, and methods. So what is the gap? The gap that we want to address is how designers deal with theory. Uh, we think that this is uh, timely for the uh, team of the conference, uh, the DRS conference which is the synergy, uh, and the synergy that we see here is the synergy be between theory and practice. Uh, a couple of uh, uh, previous studies uh, have said that designers struggle uh, when they are trying to use theory in the design process. Uh, they have said that it's difficult to digest and implement theory in the process. We believe that these particular studies that we found uh, the theories that they use are theories that are uh, maybe challenging or uh, complex or very distant from the design field. The purpose of our study is to see in specifically how theory is used uh, in ideation. Uh, we do this uh, with novice designers that are uh, senior design students. Uh, the context of, of, the, of the study is sustainability behaviors or sustainable behaviors in people. The research question is how do designers incorporate and apply behavioral theory in the design process. The methods that we use are exploratory case study. It's an exploratory case study. We, uh, we work with novice designers, uh, specifically seniors, students in, in Arizona State University, uh, from three programs, interior design, industrial design, and graphic design. We were able to recruit two males and seven females uh, for the session. Uh, between 20 and 33 years old of age. We selected the theory of behavioral economics uh, in a three-hour session. Uh, the, the, this theory is also called Nash theory. 
And we selected this theory because in design for sustainable behaviors and sustainability consumption studies, it, it, this theory has emerged as an important theory that could be applied for the challenges of sustainability. The themes that uh, we, we apply to this uh, uh, session were uh, water consumption, uh, plastic consumption, and transportation. We, for the data collection, we, uh, we had observation and interviews, and also we collected artifacts that resulted from the session, like sketches and, and storyboards. These are some images of, of the session. Um, with, uh, with us uh, and, and the students uh, in, in a room. We created three groups uh, that were multidisciplinary. Every group had students from graphic, industrial, and interior design. So the session, we ran the session uh, following a, a plan where we had the students uh, get familiar with the, the ideas and the themes of sustainability. Uh, then we introduced the theory, uh, we had a presentation and explained uh, uh, concepts, uh, basics, basic concepts of the theory. And we had the students ideate uh, in, in, in for, for a period of time. And then uh, we also had them discuss the ideas that we had uh, and uh, make decisions about what idea they would like to select for a, the, the, the desired positive behavior that they want to, they, we ask them to, uh, to think of. So these are some, uh, this was a short session and, and at the end they produced these storyboards uh, with the final idea. The findings uh, that we have uh, is uh, the idea of how design education influence the way they work. So they use design principles that were traditional like balance, contrast, and they were talking about the end users, empathy, uh, for the design process, uh, they use concepts like uh, the need of research, uh, the idea of focusing in functionality and then aesthetics, uh, and also the idea, uh, the process of uh, sketching to come up with ideas. So these are pretty uh, common uh, processes and, and design education uh, elements. We also found that uh, students use non-design uh, related or design related, non-design related concepts, which are concepts that are uh, distant from, from the field, like from marketing or from psychology. And, and we also found that there is a, an intuitive awareness of nudges. And what this means is that even though uh, most of them, just one uh, senior uh, or a participant uh, was familiar with the theory, uh, and eight of them never heard of the theory, they felt after uh, the theory was introduced, they felt that uh, they were aware of some of the concepts or they were able to, to understand these concepts because they had previous thinking or uh, 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 rational process about, uh, about the theory. Another uh, finding is the influence of personal experiences. And what this means is that they, they uh, usually wonder about uh, how the solutions or the ideas that they have uh, could influence them personally. So they imagine themselves in the situation. So they, they kind of ideate from the personal experience or the imagination where they, uh, that they have about the situation. Regarding the attitudes toward uh, the NOS theory, we found mixed uh, attitudes. So three, uh, initially, three, three, uh, three participants had positive uh, attitudes toward the theory. Four with, had neutral uh, reactions and two uh, negative. Uh, from the, for the three positives, one was really excited about the theory and, and was actually saying that the theory could be very potent and, and had a lot of potential in, in design. Uh, two, uh, the two others that had positive reaction uh, said that it was a good start using this theory uh, in uh, ideation, but they, they say that it was an insufficient theory to come up with ideas. They say that it's okay to use it, but maybe uh, as they develop they their ideation and, and the design process, 
they will probably push further or explore other things in, in, in the process. Uh, the, the two uh, participants that had a, a neg negative reaction uh, is because they had uh, uh, they, they were concerned about manipulation uh, of, and, and maybe having uh, a, a negative influence in, in people. And the last finding is that nudges had an impact in the outcomes. Uh, the students said that they had uh, they valued the theory that they have a more solid idea at the end because of the theory, that they have more tangible ideas and the ideas were more credible uh, when, when they uh, discuss them. So to discuss these findings, uh, we think that the studio-based studio education has uh, a lot of influence on in how these designers uh, work. Uh, that they are uh, very interested in current methods when they talk about user-centered design, empathy, and, and research. So they have an interest on, on these contemporary issues of design. Um, they also, uh, these non-related concepts is because we found out that uh, the minors and, and the classes that they take outside of the school uh, really uh, influence the way they, they think. And uh, they try to bring these uh, competencies to, to their activities and, and their design practice. The, the, related to the intuitive awareness of nudges, we think that uh, this theory in particular is, uh, has a proximity uh, to design and also uh, because there is a lot of discussion and a lot of uh, application of human-centered design methods. Uh, and human-centered design methods uh, are related to how people behave. So because uh, uh, a lot of this uh, evolution of, of thinking about the users, about thinking about people, about uh, uh, human centeredness. So we think that that's why that, is an, uh, that explains the intuitive awareness. Uh, the influence of uh, uh, personal experience, um, we think that uh, because of the preference for intuition and how, how the ideas uh, start from how they feel, how they think, how they do things. So this preference for intuition really influences the ideation. The myths attitudes I think were expected because there is a lot, a lot of ethical debate about behavioral economics and notch theory. So that's something that uh, was not surprising uh, for, for us. And the impact, uh, we think that this Nash theory is very practical, so that's why uh, uh, it, it uh, really influenced the discourse and, and the outcomes of, of designers. As limitations, uh, uh, we have uh, several limitations, of course. Uh, uh, we're working with novice designers, uh, it, it's an issue. Uh, the easiness of the theory might have influenced our results. The length of the session uh, might be too short, and uh, we have a res restrict restricted ideation environment where we have our own materials, and there was no research uh, for, for the participants. Uh, we have some inaudible segments in the data collection. The conclusion is that we have uh, a theory uh, that is uh, useful for uh, for ideation, and, and we think that uh, theory can actually uh, be incorporated in, in the design process. Uh, education uh, and intuition uh, of the students influence the way they work. Uh, so there is an intuitive use of theory. And for future research, uh, we, we suggest that uh, there is a need to to explore uh, different experience of designers, not just novice designers, but also uh, uh, experienced designers. Uh, we, there is a need to explore more theories with different complexity or use more than one theory to see how designers uh, inc incorporate them. Uh, we think that uh, different intervention formats would also be useful, uh, probably working with designers in, in uh, actual, uh, in, studios in the industry. We think that uh, there is a present need to understand better how evidence-based practice works, including using theory in the process of practice. Thank you very much.